All right, it's been about two weeks now, and it seems to be pretty dry now. So it's time to start uh, cleaning it up and shaping it. When you first start working on it, there's still going to be bits of dust and dirt still left on it. So I like to take an old toothbrush, don't worry, I don't use this anymore, and use it as a brush to eliminate some of the remaining dirt. So I've decided for this one I want to make just a regular handle that I can hold onto like that. So as cool as these are I'm going to cut them off. And then any of these side ones that didn't get cut off before. Okay, not too bad. For my initial shaping I like to use an X-Acto knife that helps get rid of some of these little knobbly bits. Alright, so now we've got the initial shape. So the next step is to grab some 220 grit sandpaper and just start to clean up everything. And I happen to be a little bit allergic to mullein dust, so I'm going to put this on as a dust mask. While you're sanding, sometimes you'll get some dust buildup. You need to get rid of it, so you can use your toothbrush again to wipe off the dust as you're working. Just makes it a little bit easier. For some of the heavier shaping, I like to use 60 grit sandpaper. It's pretty coarse, but it gets through it pretty quickly and can get the shape you want. Now there will be places where even with your most aggressive sanding, you won't be able to, to carve it the way you want to. That's when the various files can come in handy. Especially up here where the side roots were. It may be necessary to be a little more aggressive and use files to try and carve them down. The time has finally come to cut your cane down to size, but before we do so, let's talk about different kinds of walking sticks. The first is the fashion cane. These come to about your wrist when your arm is at rest, or slightly higher. The second time is the walking stick for general walking along moderate terrain. This will be about the height of your arm when it's bent at a 90 degree angle. The final type is the hiking staff, which can be around your height. This is for navigating very uneven terrain, or when you want serious fantasy geek cred. For this particular piece of mullein, it seemed best as a gentleman's cane. So first, turn it upside down so the head is resting on the ground. Then move your hand to where it feels about right, and make a mark. It's always better to make it too tall, because you can always cut off more later. Now that we figure out how tall we want it, now we take our craft knife again and we just start to score around the outside of the mullein at that height. I would use clippers to try and trim it. The problem is that the mullein is very thin walled and so I'm afraid I'll crush it if I try doing that. So instead, I will just continue to score around the outside until it breaks. Okay, now you can see how thin that wall is. 
you've got the outside here and all this inside is a very soft uh, material so that is easy to carve out which is what we want to do next now you can use a drill if you want or the easier way take the back of a file or something like that and just start digging out eventually you want to switch over to a file to try and clear out that hole because it needs to have all the pith removed from the center so that all we have left is just the bare wood the ultimate goal is to get this about two and a half inches deep now what we want to do is we want to find a stick that is approximately the same diameter as that hole we want to make it slightly bigger than the diameter so that you have room to carve it down some start carving your piece of wood removing any bark and getting it so that it will slip into the end of the mullein. Check every once in a while to see if it fits. Alright, now our stick should fit nicely into there. Just about right. Now if your mullein cracks while you are uh, fitting it in there, that's okay. Uh, we'll be able to fix that later. But for now, what we need is now we're going to cut this off right about here so that we can go on to the next step. All right, now we've got the plug that will fit in and sit nicely like that. However, what I like to do is I like to put a copper tip on there so what I need to do is now carve this until it fits inside this very snugly. Alrighty, so now this should fit right over the top. Okay, and then that will slide right into there, like so. And now we have a copper tip for our piece. Now with our wood glue we go along and put a little glue on the inside let it run down a little bit try and coat it all around Just insert the plug and that should now be tight in there. This is why if there's any cracks in it, it won't matter that much because with the plug on the inside, this should be plenty strong. I'm not too worried about that ever coming out or breaking anymore. And for good measure, I'm going to tight bond the tip of this uh, just to give it a protective layer in case any water seeps in between the layer of the copper and the wood. Now before I put the copper tip on for the last time, I'm going to use a little bit of super goo uh, right on the tip. Um, this stuff is called super goo, shoe goo, amazing goop, about a million other things. Basically, it's just a rubbery compound that works as a glue. So, let's take just a dab of that. That should be fine. And put this on. Okay. And that should never come off now.
Finally, for the copper tip, we're going to add a little rubber to the bottom of it. So to do that, first we need to score this, get it nice and rough. Okay, that is nice and rough. Now we're going to apply some super goo to the tip. And now to get the goo to lay down flat, you dip your finger in a little bit of water and you just press it down. The water keeps your finger from sticking to the goo. Okay, I'll we'll probably come back and do another layer later for that, but that is good for now. We've got a rubber tip on our cane now. Now it's looking pretty good, except if you look closely you'll see there's a lot of cracks, especially in the root section of it, up top. So I'm going to fix those. You can use wood putty or wood filler or something like that. I have a solution that I think looks beautiful when it's done, and it simplifies things a lot. What you use is Tight Bond 3. This is the most waterproof version of, it, of tight bond. It's essentially a wood glue. So what you do is you just take it and you just fill in those cracks. And it goes on white, but after it dries, it will turn into a clear color. Um, and what I actually do is I end up using the tight bond to cover the entire top of it. So it doesn't matter if you spill over the edges. You just soak the entire head of your cane, fill in any cracks with the tight bond. And give it a very liberal amount if you want. stuff is relatively cheap, so go ahead and use whatever you need to make it work. Alright, so you can see how it has dried somewhat already. Uh, it's got a shine to it where it's dried. In the cracks, it hasn't dried completely yet. That can take a day or more. Um, but it's dry enough that, you know, it's dry to the touch. So I'm not worried about handling it at this point. Uh, if you need to, you can always go back and fill in more glue, like right here. It looks like it's still a little deep. Um, and then we'll just continue on from there. And here is the mullein head after letting it dry overnight. All the places where the cracks have been filled in have now turned mostly opaque and not as white anymore. They'll continue to get darker uh, over time, but I think they look pretty good already. Now after wiping all the remaining dust off with a dry cloth, the time has come to give it a protective waterproof coat. There are many finishes you can use, from tongue and linseed oil to polyurethane or spar varnish, and I'm not an expert by any means, but I've had good success with lacquer, as it dries almost instantly and is hard to mess up. Ideally, I should have waited for a warmer, less windy day, but I wanted to get this video done. Just follow the directions on the can for whatever you choose to use, and go to town. And there you have it. We went from stick to stylin, weed to wonderful, molin to marvelous. Now I wouldn't recommend trying to beat up a bear with one of these things, but if what you're wanting is an interesting, one-of-a-kind, lightweight walking stick, you may just want to try this out. Not bad for a couple of bucks of materials, a bit of time and energy, and weeds from the side of the road. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed, and until next time!